Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending March 4th, 2017. Most of these stories this week are sent in by uh, Tom H. Thank you very much for sending these in. And in some cases, when he was sending the stories in, I was reading the exact identical article too, but it doesn't matter. If somebody sends it in, you get credit for it, and uh, I encourage you to keep sending material. I've even got a little bit extra to go on for next week, but still always can use more. It's nice to have more than you possibly need. But this first one, uh, I'm going to put the Fox News link up here, and it's just basically a video playing, but I also um, give you a link to News Atlas. This is lightweight metal foam turns armor-piercing bullets into dust. This is a kind of metal foam where they take molten metal and they blow air in it and try to get uniform bubble structure in the metal. I did a report on this on my TDD report back on May 7th of 2016, if you want to go back there. And the reason why I'm revisiting this is because um, this Fox News reporter, if you watched the video, actually went and saw a demonstration of this. And so many times, things like this, for example, I'll do a report on a, a new breakthrough in battery technology, and then like a year later, you'll hear nothing of it anymore, like it just disappears, and that tells me something wasn't practical about it. Well, this is a year later, almost a year later, come May it will be, and it's still going strong. So originally, this composite uh, metal foam was used for uh, stopping radiation and then they decided to try it for other uses too. So uh, here I'll read a little bit of the article. Composite metal foams are little known materials that are beginning to show some big promise. Last year we saw researchers adapt these lightweight materials to sub stop various forms of radiation in their tracks and now the same team has ramped things up to offer protection from something with a bit more force, an armor piercing bullet which was turned to dust on impact. Yeah, using this for body armor, uh, it's amazing what this stuff can do because uh, if you uh, have ever seen uh, tests on body armor, it does stop the bullets, but it still damages the person a lot. I mean, you can if you get hit with a bullet with body armor, you're still going to break ribs and stuff because of especially uh, deforming of the body armor. I mean, basically, it's still like getting hit with a sledgehammer. So um, you're allowed, I guess, according to regulations, 44 millimeters of deforming as long as the bullet bullet doesn't penetrate the armor. Well, this material only deforms about eight millimeters and the bullet never comes close to piercing it either. Uh, it is because it's metal plates though, it's not flexible like most body armor is. It's not like Kevlar cloth, so you would have to actually have regular body armor with some kind of pockets to put these plates in, just like you do with uh, metal plating and body armor to resist armor piercing rounds. But I mean, armor piercing rounds, if you've got like a, a quarter inch thick of metal, that ain't going to do much against like a, a 7.62 armor piercing round. But evidently this stuff, especially because of the fact um, it's deflecting the kinetic energy and also kind of like a razor blade cutting up the bullet because uh, the, the way the foam holes or everything like that on the edges of the holes are like razor blades and they also redirect the bullet. It's, it's similar to on spacecraft, they have this honeycomb armor so that when a, a high speed piece of debris hits into the uh, side of the spacecraft, it bounces it around. It doesn't let it ever have a straight path. It bounces from side to side, up and down. So by the time it gets close to the inside wall of the spacecraft, it's lost all of its kinetic energy. So that's the secret, basically, just uh, getting rid of kinetic energy very quickly and re-diverting it in different directions. But there's even a little GIF you can see here, too, that'll uh, if you want to play it um, on the video. And yeah, really good. This is a uh, Courtesy of Professor, and I'll see, I'll, I'll try to pronounce this, Afsanea Rabai, and you can see a picture of her holding up one of the uh, foam blocks of uh, metal foam. So great that they're still uh, going forward with this. And uh, don't hesitate, if I've done a report on something in the past and you hear something update on a subject I'm doing, send me the latest link. I'd like to see because so many of these things, they just uh, end up going nowhere. Okay, next from KETV Omaha, SpaceX says it will fly two people to the moon next year. Evidently, two very wealthy people that know each other put down a deposit, and Elon Musk said he's going to be willing to fly them to the moon. Now, they're not going to land on the moon. They're going to get to go and circle around the moon. So anyway, I'll read a little bit of this article. Company chief Elon Musk announced the surprising news Monday. Two people who know one another approached the company about sending them on a week-long flight just beyond the moon. Musk won't identify the pair or the price tag. He says they've already paid a significant deposit. Musk says SpaceX is on track to launch astronauts to the International Space Station from NASA in mid-2018. This moon mission would follow about six months later using a Dragon crew capsule and a Falcon Heavy rocket. Musk says the moon mission is designed to be autonomous unless something goes wrong. Yeah, I, I like that, unless something goes wrong. I don't know. 
I don't care how much money I had. I don't know if I would actually get aboard this spaceship right now at this state. You know, it'd, it'd be different if they'd already had, you know, dozens of flights to the moon and back with no problems. But to be one of the first ones, so anyway, as the SpaceX says, the passengers would fly to the moon but won't land on it. Yeah, obviously. I mean, that's flying around the moon is one thing. And then also being able to land somehow and take off again, that makes it even quite a bit more complicated. So what do you think? Would you take a chance and get on board one of those, even if they gave you a free ticket to ride on it? I don't think it's quite ready for prime time myself. <clears throat> so anyway, this next one is from Sky News. Scientists plan to trap a ship in ice to drift across North Pole. And this is the ship RV Polar Stern. Arctic explorers dreaded getting trapped in the ice, but now scientists are doing exactly that in a bid to tackle climate change. They're going to purposefully trap this into the ice, I guess, in the year... Uh, 2019 or so, researchers from 14 countries, including the UK, will set sail on board the research ship RV Polar Stern, which will be allowed to be stranded in sea ice so it can drift across the North Pole. They say the insights came from the Arctic, where climate change is occurring faster than anywhere else on Earth could prove invaluable in measuring the environmental damage. The daring nature is inspired by an 1893 expedition of Norwegian explorer, and I'm going to slaughter this too, probably, Friedhof Nansen who allowed his boat, the Fram, to become trapped in sea ice in hopes that it would gradually drift towards the North Pole. Yeah, I remember in that, uh, they weren't able to take a lot of different scientific measurements because they didn't have the kind of equipment we have now, but they could take temperature, wind direction, wind speed, stuff like that. The 120-mile-long icebreaker will begin its 1,550-mile journey in 2019 and is expected to be away for a year. A crew will include armed guards to fight off attacks by polar bears. Yeah, they're going to set up a whole encampment around this after it becomes trapped in the ice. I guess they're going to set up a whole little, maybe a little miniature town or something around it with different equipment and things like that. And then they're going to have places for airplanes to land and take off and stuff. If you want to, this article doesn't get in that much detail, but if you uh, put down the uh, uh, RV, the uh, name of the boat, the uh, RV uh, Polar Stern, and do searches on Google and stuff like that. There are a lot of different articles, and one of them has a little kind of a drawing type of map of how they're going to set up their encampment and everything. So they're just going to drift all the way across the uh, ice as it uh, as the ice moves, and then eventually reach a part uh, a year later where they'll actually be free of the ice. So um, that's something I didn't even know myself. I did not know if you were trapped on one side of the North Pole, you would actually just the whole ice and everything would just move you along and. Uh, a year later, or however long, you know, I guess it depends on where you start at. Eventually, you'll just uh, be uh, pushed all the way across till you're free of the ice again. So it says there are many, many really small scale processes which they affect the climate on a regional basis and global scale in the Arctic, but which can't be observed from a satellite. So these people are basically going to live there for about a year. I imagine, I don't know, they might switch off crews or something like that because they obviously will have planes landing and taking off and bringing them supplies or something like that. So. Yeah, I, I would be, uh, actually, and uh, Tom and I talked about this, too, when we were chatting about this article. It would be nice if they would actually give weekly updates and have a YouTube channel going or something like that. And as a matter of fact, if I forget, if uh, one of my viewers could possibly um, keep me updated on that, too, because I have so many articles trying to keep track of, of everything. But if you do catch on to something like that, to where they're posting regular updates, whether it be uh, Vimeo, YouTube, or a, a weekly blog or something like that, please let me know, and I would be glad to share it with the viewers. And last up, I'd like to do another promo. I do I do quite a few promos of this, but I, uh, it's just it's a good channel. It's the ITL with my friend Muzzle Mike, and this week, actually, he did another review of a karaoke-style microphone. It's a wireless mic that has a transmitter and receiver, and I've actually seen it demonstrated before he did this uh, latest video of his, which is ITL8 2017. He actually did his, I think it was his previous video that actually used this microphone. He is um, somebody that's kind of like me. He likes gadgets that are cheap, but that work well, and his lapel mic was another one. He's uh, uh, limiting a budget to about $20 or less but getting some decent audio gear. Sure, not the best. This is not going to be like a, a $700 Heil microphone or something like that, but uh, from what I've heard of both the microphones he has, the lapel mic, which I believe is a pile mic, uh, the models, you're just gonna, you can you can communicate just like with, with my TDD channel. If you have questions about stuff, if you want to know more information, he's got the model number of the microphone he talks about here. It's the SMM-107 in his story, but uh, ask him questions about anything. He's uh, just like me, he communicates with the people that watches his show. I mean, 
my viewers are important. Uh, I try as best as I can to answer every comment. I may not get all of them, but I try to get better than 90%, if not more, and he's the same way, too. He uh, does not ignore comments. He answers. He'll communicate with you. So um, watch it if you get a chance. It's about a 13-minute long video with the review of the microphone, and uh, go back and even watch some of his other reviews of other uh, um, things besides that, too. I mean, he, re he reviews lots of things. He reviews knives. He reviews guns, things like that, um, holsters. Uh, different grips for guns and things, but it's always with a mind of budget. That's what I like about it too. He's not going to go out and get the latest, greatest, most expensive stuff. He's he's uh, on the side of us budget-minded people that don't have a lot of money to spend. So that's a good thing. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.